If you want a reliable car, you need a service center that you can rely on, and you can depend on Eurasian to be there for you. At Eurasian, our goal is repairing your vehicle right the first time, from shuttle service and an in-house parts department to same-day diagnostics and time with master certified technicians, our work comes with a 12-month, 12,000-mile service warranty. We specialize in Mercedes, BMW, Lexus, Acura, SUVs, hybrids, and more. Celebrating 20 years in Tyson's Corner, Eurasian is locally owned by partners who are always around. Call 703-893-3045 at 8501 Tyco Road in Tyson's Corner. Visit EurasianServiceCenter.com for online specials and discounts. That's 703-893-3045. From our family to yours, we're here when you need us. I'm American in Paris. The only thing that could stop this traveler from having a great vacation is... Tired. Lucky for him, he packed Ammonium AD Traveler Capsules. Take two of these every six hours and solidify your vacation. was making something stupid. The stupid casserole she makes with tuna fish. And it came, and it took her. Help me! Oh God! It's so cold! If you can turn off the world like this, what's a guy like me going to do? Mount some brave resistance? I... You never think about the end, always assuming that you're the exception to the rule, but then the end really does come, in horror and in the dark.
Hey there, baby. How you doing? I am okay. What are you up to? Just got done listening to the new album of my all-time favorite artist. His name is Jackie. And his band is called The Tree Horns. Jackie and the Tree Horns. Sounds kind of stupid. Is it any good? Is it any good? It's only, like, the greatest album. Like, ever. It's actually a tribute album. You should come to my hip loft apartment and listen to it with me. It will change your life. Your apartment? Um. Okay. I guess that is fine. What was the name of this band again? Jackie Leghorns? I am not as hip as you, obviously. You have those really cool body holly glasses. Jackie's music will change your life. You will never want to listen to any other music. Ever. He is so good that they did a tribute album for him. It is called It's All About Me. Because with Jackie, everything is about him. Wow. He sounds like a great guy. What does their music sound like? It is so awesome that I can't even put it into words. His music will make you want to make love. With me. Hopefully. Are you saying he makes porno music? We can find out. If you agree to come listen to his music at my cool loft apartment. I have a really cool retro stereo that I bought at Target. Let's go listen. I don't know who Jackie and the Tree Horns are. But I want to find out. Badly. I think I am in love with Jackie. Hey baby. I'm glad you decided to come over to listen to the new Jackie and the Tree Horns tribute album. When you invited me over you said you had a loft apartment. Did I say that? I meant to say I used to have a loft in my room. I used to have a loft with a couch underneath it. Chicks really dig that. I don't think that is true anyway. When do I get to hear this Jackie and the Leghorns album? It's Tree Horns. Whatever, when do I get to hear it? I will put it on in a moment, but first why don't you make yourself more comfortable? I wish I could, but this place is disgusting and gross. Why is there garbage everywhere? Don't worry about that. Once you hear Jackie's music you will not care about the garbage. What does that mean? It means that you are about to experience a level of auditory arousal that will really make you want to rip off my clothes and make sweet love to me. That doesn't seem likely. Of course it does, or at least I hope so. Why is that? Because I have a fever. A fever that only Jackie can cure. If only Jackie can cure your fever then why am I here? Oh, that is too deep for me. I do not know why hipsters, like you think it is cool to like a band that no one has ever heard of before. And then when that band becomes popular hipster folk, like you get offended because you have been a fan longer. I am going to leave now. Okay then, fine. Go but then you won't get to hear Buddy Revel and the Three Akla Kai's version of How Much Does It Mean. Who is Buddy Revel? Another band that you read about on your blog? Please just sit down and give it a listen. Okay, just one song, and then I am going to leave, but only because I don't want you to actually know how scared you are making me. You are creeping me out. Good. I hope you like it. Meeting someone with so much talent, it's rare. I'm not gonna say it's a once in a lifetime thing, but think about it. Shakespeare, Mozart, Dylan, Hemingway, Picasso, Klosterman, Zappa, they all had it. But then Jackie, to fade away like that. It's the opposite of, how's the saying go? It's better to burn out than to do it like Jackie did. In 1979, an up-and-coming American musician hit the music scene like a smoke bomb with his backup band The Aprils. Their debut album full release gained instant notoriety, containing songs filled with sexual innuendo and tales of illicit behaviors. 
Even by today's standards, the record still seems quite vulgar, and its legality is questionable in many states and countries. That young musician is now known the world over simply as Jackie, of Jackie and the Treehorns. And like so many other stars before and after him, Jackie's tale is one of stardom, decadence, abuse, self-aggrandizing, romance, and betrayal. First time I met, met him, we're backstage at Bohemian Caverns in DC, and he's trying to sell me on some idea he had about being the first musician to record in outer space, the moon, he said. So this guy, who I met two minutes earlier, He's got me jacked up against the wall in the corner, backstage at a club, chicks, booze everywhere, but he's talking to me about recording on the moon, fucking outer space. And you know what? Somehow he convinced me. The next day I, I went out and bought a telescope. I was ready for anything. I mean, even now, you know, nights when the, the moon is visible, I, I can't help but think about Jackie. But right then and there, I thought to myself, I'm contacting some promoters. I'm going to look into booking this Jackie guy on the moon, live from Fremora Highlands. It was Jackie's idea to do it in holophonic sound. Such a, so ahead of his era, this guy. It's amazing. Though live from the Fremora Highlands in holophonic sound never saw the light of day, his longtime manager and consigliere, Heschel Treehorn, knew he had struck gold, and it would only be a matter of time before he made Jackie a star. Heschel quickly secured Jackie a contract with Mick Longstein's Tramp Stamp Records and made plans to move him and his first backup band, The Aprils, out to Los Angeles to embark on what would become one of the most infamous recording sessions in rock music history. We got to LA and we were told we had three days to record the album. So we show up, no one could find Jackie. We had no clue where he was, he just disappeared for two days. Then, on the third day, he walks into the studio with his guitar and his assistant Mookie, hands us a stack of papers. Jackie had written some like 54 songs for the album, some crazy number like that. Said he wanted to do them all. It was some kind of concept album he wrote the night before. The engineer said, man, that's impossible. Who do you think you are? You want a story about Jackie? I'll give you a fucking story about Jackie. First day he came into the studio, he immediately acted like he owned the place. And as far as I could tell, that guy had never even stepped foot into a recording studio. And there he goes. He's turning knobs on the board and syncing up tapes and congs are in the bathroom. Microphones are everywhere. I mean, who the fuck did this Jackie think he was? How did I meet Jackie? It was 20 years ago in Los Angeles. Did you ever know how much it means? I was working as a studio musician. They brought me in to wail on the Aprils record. God love them. They sucked. I got to the studio about 3 o'clock in the morning. And this assistant walks up to me, handing me a folder full of papers. I thought they were sheet music. When I opened the folder, there was nothing in the folder except pictures of Jackie and notes. Before the shock could wear off, this man walked into the room. It was kind of bigger than the place. Did you ever know how much it means to keep your head inside all those dreams? It was really weird. He was asking everybody if they were ready. So I, well, he was the man, so I walked up to him and said, I'm ready, sir, but what key is the tune in? And he stepped up to me and lowered his sunglasses. He said they're in the key of J. And I said, they're in the key of J? And he said, yeah, I write all my songs in the key of J, the key of Jackie. Oh man. So I just gotta give him a little start. You better not.
not say a word. I, I have to get this you out. say a goddamn word, I'll fucking cut you. I'm going to say it. Look, man, we never really told anyone this, and you're going to have to leave this out of the film, okay? Okay. Okay, and all that, but um, we never actually played on that album. I mean, we were there in the studio, you know, we were there with Jackie, but man, once Jackie gets going, you're just best to get out of Jackie's way. <laughs> the Aprils? God love them, but those guys suck. <laughs> When I heard the master tapes, I couldn't believe what Jackie had gotten out of them. Upon its release, Jackie and the Aprils' debut album, Full Release, skyrocketed to the top of the charts. Suddenly, actors and athletes, politicians and poets, women spanning the seven continents, and even some men, wanted nothing but more Jackie in their lives. When I was a little girl, back in Altoona, I dreamed of the limitless boundaries of what my own mind could offer. I would sit in my bedroom and dream about him, and listen to his music. Jackie's early records could take me places, places that medication never could. I wouldn't use the word groupie, okay? I mean, it was a different time. I was younger, inexperienced. He had this charisma that made me want to just drop my pants. I'm a family man, you know? It's like I have the wife, the kids, the yard, the light, riding lawnmower. But you know what? Jackie come here today? Want to sleep with my wife? No problem. I let him. I even watch. But I might even participate. Only if he let me, though. I let Jackie play a little Lucky Pierre. Huh? Huh? During the full release tour, Jackie enjoyed the fruits and herbs of his stardom to the most full of excess. Stories of lavish parties, destroyed hotels, and womanizing spread around the globe like a disease. His shows would become known as cathedrals for debauchery, a place where stone teenagers would explore their illicit behaviors, while his backstage parties would rival those of Liberace himself. But all this would soon come crashing to a halt one night in Berlin, when Jackie would meet a woman that would change his life forever. When I first met Jackie, he was this shy guy fumbling over his words. Little did I know at the time, it was because he had a huge crush on me. Of course, I can't blame him, who wouldn't? But I was with Django and we were happily in love. To me, at the time, Jackie was just another fan. He was immediately in love with her. I mean, let's face it, we all were. She was a huge model in Europe. She'd acted in Hollywood, she'd sung in Nashville, she designed shoes in New York City. Every musician in that era wanted to be seen with her. Well, she was with Django when Jackie met her, so Jackie being Jackie, he made his move in a way that only Jackie could. So I knew Jackie was unhappy with the Aprils, and I can't blame him because they sucked. And he started saying to me, you know, we got to get something going. And at the time, I was getting restless with my own band, The Hormones. We had just released our sophomore follow-up, Come With Me, on a fact cunt. And I knew this Jackie guy was the next big thing, right? So yeah, I took him up on his offer, and we started jamming immediately. And so we rode around Europe on tour, getting high, having fun, stopping on the hillsides of these amazing small villages. We would hang out with the locals. Uh, we'd help them harvest their vegetables, take long walks with their daughters, write some tunes, eat some food. It was paradise. After just one album with the Aprils, Jackie fired the band by way of telegram from his manager, Heschel. It seemed cold-hearted, but in the music industry, you go where the talent is. And everyone knew that talent was with Jackie. One day, I'm on top of the world, touring every country on the planet, number one songs, women, booze, drugs, rock and roll. And the next, I'm back home, working as a line cook and giving drum lessons on the weekend to paraplegic kids. 
it's not the same kind of high, but uh, it's some kind of high. With the Aprils gone, Django in his corner, and still riding off the success of his first album, Jackie and his new band, The Treehorns, released Do You Mind If I Wear a Clown Mask. Rolling Stone gave it five stars and called the album whiter than the White Album. The Village Voices review appeared in the Adult Classified section, at the demand of Jackie. I mean, not everybody hears music like I do. I mean, I'm not just some random casual listener. I'm a music critic. It's not just anyone that can listen to music and understand them more than the band members themselves do. But I understand them. I absorb them. I analyze them. I criticize for a living. You read what I write and listen to me because of the superior taste I've cultivated over years. You listen to the band through me. It's a gift that very few of us have. I mean, the ability not just to hear music, but to share our opinions with you so that you don't have to waste any of your time developing one yourself. I mean, we create stars out of mediocrity and ignore the thousands and thousands of other artists deserving, undeserving. I mean, because of what we hear and what we're able to communicate, we have the power in order to do this. We're, we're talking about Jackie? Jackie, the Clown Mask album. Repulsive and repugnant, compellingly disgusting, sonically disconcerting, oratorily offensive, harmoniously lacking, treacherous and treasonous, <laughs> obviously not anywhere near as good as his earlier stuff. Despite the mostly positive reception, the Treehorns were on shaky ground as a band. Jackie had secretly and legally changed the band's name to Jackie and the Treehorns, while a love triangle was manifesting itself within the camp. Quite simply, Jackie was smitten with Starlet and could no longer hold back his feelings, and his relationship with Django would soon suffer. Let's face it, Jackie used me to get to Starlet. It was never about us collaborating musically, collaborating spiritually, or physically. Looking back, I should have seen it. I was too blinded by my love for Jackie. It was all about Jackie for me. But to Jackie, it was all about Jackie. Jackie and Starlet. I would catch Jackie staring at me from across the room or sneaking by my hotel room door in the middle of the night while Django was passed out. He would slip anonymous notes under the door. I knew it was him, although he said it wasn't. He was totally obsessed with me. Then again, I was constantly receiving gifts from strange men. I was, after all, a huge star. So one night I came home and I found Jackie on a ladder outside of our house. He was trying to climb through the window. And he tried to act all startled, but we knew what he was up to. He was a fucking stalker, okay? He was starfucker, not me, okay, everyone? Contrary to what everybody thinks, it is, in fact, Jackie that that song is about. Just ask Starlet. A stalker? Oh, I don't think Jackie was a stalker. In those days, that was sometimes the way that men showed affection. I mean, what's the difference between that and Romeo? He was in love with me, and he wanted to show me by climbing into my room unannounced at 3 a.m. on a Tuesday night. I could see the signs early on. I knew Starlet was with Django, and once Jackie manipulated him to form the Treehorns, it was only a matter of time before he set his next target, which was Starlet. I mean, she was huge in her own right. Every musician wanted to be with her. She'd been with Elton and Freddie and Bowie, so she could handle the likes of Jackie and Django. Publicly, Django's ouster from the Treehorns was said to be due to irreconcilable creative differences. But rumors swirled around the press about Django's hard partying and drinking problems. He had a different story, however. Let me tell you something. When you wake up in Memphis in a booze-induced haze, 
with a bus ticket stapled to your chest, you look to blame everyone else but yourself. Django woke up in Memphis. Memphis wasn't even a tourist stop. Had to go. J minus seven. He just drank it away. Yeah, that's bullshit. The drinking? No, he wanted me gone. He wanted Starlet. Well, you know what? He got her. Getting rid of me was the only way he could make that happen. You know, he knew, Jackie knew, we still had some good blues albums left in us. We are gold together, Pony Boy. Gold! Stay gold. But fuck him. And fuck Starlet. And you know what? Fuck the tree horns. And fuck you. And fuck me, man. This fucking interview is over. Away from me! Get away! Get away! Get away! With Django out of the picture and Starlet by his side, it seemed as if Jackie was ready to launch the next phase of his career with the Treehorns. Their next albums would be filled with more experimental avant garde material, isolating many rock critics and confusing many fans. Some were concerned with the direction Jackie's music had taken. Some even blamed Starlet. Oh yes, I definitely blame that on Starlet. She ruined Jackie for years. Getting him into all that weird music. But I still bought two dozen copies of each of them, and I listened to them backwards. He would say things to me in those recordings. I, I swear he was. Me contrató para una grabación que iba a hacer en Venezuela con Starlet y su banda Alabama en The Dick Ritchie Valens Quartet. Después de estas grabaciones me preguntó si quería ir de gira con ellos y los Three Horns para tocar la batería. Así que me ofreció plata, mujeres y fama, así que dije, bueno, vamos. Estuvimos en Europa, en Australia y en Rusia. Por supuesto, yo ni me imaginaba lo desgraciado que era este Jackie. Me acuerdo que una noche, después de topar un concierto, estuve con una vieja de Ucrania, nos fuimos para atrás, estaba una mamá, estaba ya desnudo, y en eso, el bus está partiendo, sin mí. Así que salgo corriendo inmediatamente, y lo veo, en la última ventana está Jackie, mirándome, riéndose. Él dijo que pensaba que me quería quedar, que me gustaba la vieja y que no. Pero que yo estaba corriendo desnudo, sin papeles, en un país de no conocía. Así que, bueno, me agarró la policía y me mandaron a Siberia a pelar pollos por 16 horas al día durante dos años. No hay un día que no pasa donde no pienso cómo vengarme de este maldito, hijo puta, desgraciado, malparido, maricón, Jackie. So, yeah, Gringo got left. That was unfortunate, but it paved the way for Jackie's amazing record, The Russian Incident, which he, of course, still won't release. The Russian Incident was just one in a long line of unreleased Jackie albums. His refusal to open his vault to the world and release any new recordings led to diminished album sales and sparser crowds. A once immensely influential career seemed at risk of being cut short. Live from the Fremora Highlands and Holophonic Sound, the Russian incident, Jackie is dead, Jackie lives, Jackie live, Jackie's archives. In the court of the kingdom of Jackie, parts one, two, three, and seven, songs in the key of Jackie, they're all waiting. You can't tour to albums that the fans have never heard before. And then Mick Longstein called. So listen, I was the one who originally signed this fella Jackie. It was me. I could tell right away he was going to be a huge star. Not one of these average stars or regular stars. I could tell he was going to be huge. And we had some success together with that little backup group of his. And throughout the years, we shared a lot of laughs, had a lot of fun, and we sold a lot of records. And the one thing that brings a smile to my face every time I think of that guy are those excellent recipes of his. 
Shit, I was in the front row when he accepted his first Songwriter of the Year award from the Daily Athenium. But this here is a business. And like with most businesses, it's about two things. It's about growth, and it's about the people. And the people are the tricky part, because they have loved ones they need to care for. They need to house, they need to feed, they need to clothe, and they need to teach them how to play a J minor seventh correctly. So needless to say, we here at Tramp Stamp Records had some big decisions to make. And we decided this Jackie fella, he was an artist we simply couldn't afford to handle any longer. We couldn't keep him in the family. Jackie hears music all around him, all the time, like in the sound of pigeons' feet walking on pavement. So I told him, I said, record those pigeons' feet, Jackie. Record them and then loop it backward over the, the sound of a wind rustling through the shacks of the disparate people in, in Daffer until it sounds like a, a morning dew layered on your lips like the aftertaste of a fine Merlot. This, this is how you achieve a convergence of body, mind, soul, and a new pair of Manolo Blahnik shoes, size seven and a half. Dropped from his label, Tramp Stamp Records, and no longer with backup band, The Treehorns, Jackie's career had hit rock bottom. Starlet, once an A-list model and actress, was relegated to D-movie roles and failed reality shows. So what did you want to talk about? I think Eric is having an affair. Actually, I know he is. What do you mean? I mean, I slept with him last night. <gasps> you bitch! <gasps> an industry once abuzz with the name Jackie had moved on to newer and fresher stars such as Ron Johnson and the Audio Consultants and Albert and the Swear Engines. Two bands that had once emulated Jackie now surpassed him in success and fame. The first time I met Jackie was at the San Bernardino District ball field. Well, not really met him. I had his album full release on full blast, bumping for my 1982 Camaro Stereo. I took my girlfriend to the dugout as we got busy to Jackie's sweet voice and sweet chords. I took all my girls there to the dugout. We made our moves and grooves to Jackie's grooves. Without Jackie around, rock was dead. I mean, you had these new guys, these imposters, who couldn't find rock and roll, you know, even if Jackie crawled into bed with them and slid it up their asses. For example, Ron Johnson and the audio consultants? Clearly, without Jackie, you would have never even heard of this guy. A, a, quite frankly, a total rip-off artist. People have said that I've been basing my career and riding the Jackie wave. But I think my song, The Girls Are Rockin', is rap. I mean, but ripping off Jackie, it just became what you did. I mean, no one had seen the guy for years, so everyone just assumed they could use his music. Uh, there were rumors floating around the industry that you could just call up Starlet, offer her some sort of gift, and she would basically give permission, you know, for bands to use one of Jackie's songs. Uh, these bands would essentially pay for the chance to record a cover of a Jackie song. Then they'd put it on their album, and bam, triple platinum. And the reason why that happened is just because people wanted to hear more Jackie, and even if it was a hack job, 
done by some douchebags from the valley. When I heard all these second tier acts making it big off of Jackie material, I knew it was now or never for Jackie and for me. I called him up and I told him, Jackie, you hear that? And I'd hold the phone up in the air. That's the sound of your glory being stolen. He ignored me. Of course, Jackie knew all those bands that were playing his music. He was practically a stepbrother to most of those guys. Jackie would take these young bands out on tour with him, and he would school them each and every night on the ways of the road. Because Jackie was good on the road. Oh yeah, Jackie was very good on the road. He loved hotels. He, would call, he wanted to call the first Treehorn album Seedy Motel. So now, what? They were just taking his music and getting rich off of Jackie's talents? So I called up Pesh myself. So Starlet calls me up one night, on my home line, mind you. She starts ripping into me and how I'm stealing from Jackie like Napster, because I was letting all these bands play his songs and make millions off of it. <laughs> Napster. She, she doesn't even know how to turn on a computer. Anyway, I was trying to get in a word edgewise, but she kept going on and on about how Ron Johnson and Clarice and all these other shitty bands were taking her husband's songs. I was furious. Someone was trying to take advantage of Jackie, and you don't take advantage of Jackie. Jackie takes advantage. Finally, I had to explain it to her. I said, Starlet, baby, Bobola, listen to me. These pants are not stealing Jackie's songs. I don't remember that portion of the conversation. After I finally calmed her down, she realized what I was trying to say. It's a tribute album to Jackie. Jackie's manager had convinced the couple to finally accept a deal, which gave Jackie 100% of the royalties from the album and its merchandising. Once released, It's All About Me, a tribute to Jackie, shot to the top of the charts, and Jackie was back on top. When my old band, My Dog Precious, used to cover Jackie songs in the local clubs, they were always the most orgasmic of moments for the band and the audience. Collectively, we would have auditory orgasms on stage. It was beautiful. So when my new band, Clarice and the Lotion Baskets, were asked to play a song on the Jackie Tribute album, let's just say we had a lot of fun in the studio that night. Now every time we cover Jackie, we call it ejaculation. Why did you do the tribute album? Why did I do the tribute album? The Dick Ritchie Valens Quartet are the greatest musicians who have ever had the honor of working with me. Being able to play on a tribute album to my soulmate Jackie, it's as rewarding in a spiritual sense as it is in a fiscal sense. Being married allows us to both reap the rewards of Jackie's talents. Look, Jackie gave me the booze. He took my woman took my songs, he demoted my career to Peter Scolari status. Do I look like the other fucking bosom buddy to you? Do I? Do you know what it's like walking into the discount den and seeing your last album in the goddamn dollar bin right next to oversized Pepsis and three day old tacos? It's fucking demoralizing. That's what it is. But do you know what else it is? It's what makes great fucking rock and roll. The tribute album put Jackie back where he belongs. We got asked to play every show on earth, but Jackie doesn't do stadiums. He likes what he used to call the larger intimacy of an outdoor festival, you know, 
two, three hundred thousand or so. He can connect with that type of audience because Jackie wants his fans to be able to touch him. And sometimes Jackie likes to touch his fans as well. <laughs> We're talking about a guy who was supposed to headline Live Aid on both continents. He had a seat on Phil Collins' uh, Concord, but he had to cancel at the last minute. He got offered a gig that actually paid. With Jackie back in the spotlight and the tribute album climbing up the charts, his fame grew to astonishing new levels outside of the music industry. What's it like being married to a rock star like Jackie? Put it this way, with Jackie, I just know that all of my clothes and possessions are with me instead of with another woman that could have bought them if I wasn't married to Jackie. Do you ever think about Jenga? Sure. Um, sure, I think of him. Hearing him sing Starfucker on the tribute album, I thought it was sweet. I know some people might think that's a little creepy or something, but they're just jealous. I mean, come on. How many girls have ever had a love song written about them? Once the media frenzy died down around the tribute album, Jackie and Starlet retreated to their cottage in the Scottish Highlands to record a new project that Heschel Treehorn has stated will make back in black look white. Knowing Jackie's tendencies towards recording, but then not releasing albums, his fans await in a cautious but optimistic state. My friend, he sent me this bit torrent, right? And it does not really look like Jackie. I'm not sure if it is Jackie, but it has some choir boys and they are singing to beatboxing or some shit. But shit, maybe it is Jackie from him. You just do not know what to expect. Another Jackie album is coming out? Oh my God. 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 I just downloaded like 15 copies. Recording technology has finally caught up to Jackie. I mean, watching Jackie in the studio today, 20 something years after our first session together, man, it's still cosmic. And I know the new album rocks because I was there. I witnessed its creation. I've been there with Jackie all these years, making jactical music together. It's like, he's an XLR cable, and I'm a Shure 57. We just, we connect. Mo Lester? I don't even know no Mo Lester. I ain't even been to San Diego. So enough about Jackie already, okay? I want to talk about my band. We're totally original, rocking, independent. We don't sound anything like Jackie or the shit he's been doing with Starlet these days. The Ether Bunnies or whatever. We don't sound like Jackie. We don't look like Jackie. We don't act like Jackie. This has nothing to do with Jackie. What's the name of your band? It's called Treehorn and the Jackies. You look at the influence that uh, Jackie has had, and it, it's, it's just immense. I'm as excited as the next guy for a new album, but then I remember, it's Jackie. He's been recording the album for four years. I mean, it's just like all the rest of his work. It'll sit in a vault, only him and Starlet will get to hear it. Look, I'm not saying I'm giving up on Jackie, but I don't think I can pull him out with another Jackie tribute album or Jackie Lives, an archival collection of his concert shows. That might be something. <laughs> We've just been through so much together, and traveling the world and sharing our experiences like soldiers, like brothers in arms, like like real brothers, not the Dire Straits album, Brothers in Arms, which, by the way, Jackie was asked to play on. Turned out he couldn't do it. Anyway, sharing our experiences. <laughs> it's the most important thing in the world to me. 
And I'm not alone. I mean, millions and millions of other fans are awaiting his next move. I cherish our time together. I do. I just wish he would return my calls. A tale of musical exploration, aided by immense ego. An ego that included creating his own musical key. He has been both a recluse as well as an extroverted narcissist obsessed with worldwide fame and accolades. An artist that has created a persona so mystifying and unique, one can only guess what the limits of Jackie's imagination might be. Perhaps for a man like Jackie there are no limits. No guidelines, no beginning and no end. There are no rules or regulations for how one can be Jackie. Hello, I'd like to welcome you and thank you all for coming here today. Nice to see so many familiar faces. How you doing? I understand many of you have numerous questions regarding rumors and stories that have been swirling through the media and the industry regarding Jackie. I spoke to Jackie recently and he fully intend, we fully intend to release Jackie's archives so all the albums you've heard about and everything has been traded online, this will be a true emptying of the vaults. I will now take some questions. If uh, Don Binghamton. Has, is there any truth to the story going around that you, in fact, have not spoken to or seen Jackie for over two years? We're here to talk about Jackie's vault, the archives release, and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions pertaining to that if you have any. So you won't confirm or deny whether you've actually seen Jackie in, let's say, the last six months? I'm not going to get into specifics on who I've seen, who I've talked to, the timelines, or anything like that. We are here to talk about Jackie's archive releases. Hesh, and I, I have two sources that inform me as recently as yesterday that Jackie is, in fact, dead. Dead? <laughs> you kidding me? No, no. Jackie's fine. Jackie's not dead. Jackie lives, as the album title says, and, excuse, excuse me, I'm sorry, I, I have to take this. Hello? What? But ha when? Uh, um, wow, I, I just received some very shocking news. That, that, that was Starlet. Jack, Jackie's dead. Holy shit. Jackie's dead. We're gonna sell a shit ton of records. fumbling over his words. Little did I know at the time, it was... <laughs> Number one songs, women, booze, drugs, monosodium glutamate, you shoot that right up in there. You want a story about Jackie? I mean, the first... Uh... And ever since then, man, since that very day, man, I've been writing my songs in the key of J. The key of Jackie. God, oh my 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 god. I mean, he was like a rock star. 
He told me he was. Is he even still alive? Yeah, something weird, crack core choir boys. Sorry. It's alright, pick it up. You can't smoke in here. This is my fucking house. Entonces Jackie es un hijo de puta, malparido, mamá huevo, estafador, manipulador, cabrón, rosquete. Que la puta que lo parió. Line one, take 25. <gasps> you bitch! Oh, I'm it! I'm it! I'm it! <gasps> Orgasmic. So when I say the girls are rocking, I'm gonna have guys in the studio saying, yeah, yeah. Cause there's a starlet <laughs> oh waiting in the sky. <laughs> Brand name cereals, straight out the box. Chinese takeout, flown in from the Orient. Foot massages. Lube up anything you want. Just <laughs> remember that night with the and peanut butter. Midgets go well with peanut butter. They St. pair Louis. well. Yes, St. Louis was a crazy night. St. Louis of any kind. Uh, throwing stars, nunchucks, karate outfits, whole kung fu motif. The gi. The gi? Yeah. The gi was in full force. Full force, the whole rap group partied with us for a while. They were damned. We were trying to get in with Kid and Play there. It didn't work out. We couldn't roll with them. Donkeys, not donkey shows, but just donkeys. Beers, um, non-alcoholic beers just to mess with people's minds. Those were the days. Messing with people's minds. Rock and roll. <laughs>